myself Raki Kumari, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, ABS Engineering College, Ghaziabad, affiliated to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University. Today in the lecture series of Microwave and Radar Engineering, we will study two cavity clistron. Till now what we have studied? Till now we have studied about the microwave uh, frequencies, microwave waveguides and other microwave passive components. And in the last lecture, we have done with the uh, problem faced by the normal vacuum tubes at the microwave frequency. So, if the normal micro, uh, vacuum tubes does not properly work at the microwave frequency, so the new types of components come into the existence for the microwave frequency. One of uh, one and the foremost important of that is the two cavity clistron. So, what is the two cavity clistron? The two cavity clistron is a widely used microwave amplifier which are operated by the principle of velocity and current modulation. Till now being a student of uh, communication engineering you have studied about the different type of modulation techniques for example amplitude modulation, phase modulation, frequency modulation. So, but this velocity modulation concept come into the existence for the first time for you and that in the case of a microwave two cavity clistron. So, what are the basic components which are associated with the two cavity clistron? First one is the electron gun focusing and accelerating grids to identical cavities separated by a distance and the far end grounded collector plate. So, these are the basic component which are with two cavity clistron. So, what is the function of a electron gun? So, the electron gun emits electron from the surface of its cathode and then they are focused into the beam and which part do the focusing of the beam? That is our two identity focusing and accelerating grids. Now, after that a DC accelerating positive voltage, the beam is accelerated to high velocity. So, there the velocity change occurs that is why the velocity modulation is the basic principle. Now, the characteristic of a two cavity clistron efficiency it is about 40 percent power output in continuous wave mode up to 500 kilowatt at 10 gigahertz power output in pulse mode up to 30 megawatt at 10 gigahertz and power gain is about 30 dB. Now, here comes the schematic diagram of a two cavity clistron. So, the cavity uh, two cavity clistron consists of this one first that is the cathode which emit the electrons and electron guns are with it. Then it is converted into proper beam with the help of this grid which act as an anode also. Now, this is the two cavity first one is the buncher cavity and second one is the catcher cavity. They are basically identical to each other and they are separated by a fixed distance L. And again we are talking about one type sort of collector. So, this is the collector. What is going to happen in this? That the frequency which have which we have to amplify the RF input is the signal which we have to amplify with the help of a two cavity cholesterol. So, this is the input which has to be amplified and this is the biasing input. So, and this is always greater than this input. We always keep in mind that V naught is always greater than the RF input signal which has to be amplified. So, what is going to happen? Electron moves from here with a velocity, initial velocity of V naught and when in between it comes across the buncher cavity and in the buncher cavity it get interacted with the RF input signal also which is inserted inside the two cavity clistron with the help of buncher cavity. And after coming out of it what is going to happen? The velocity of electron does not remain the same it changes into the modulated one that is the V T 1. And now what is going to happen? So, in the modulation case the electron are in the form of a bunch 
and now what is going to happen that this modulated velocity of course velocity v is associated with it so kinetic energy which is our half mv square v square that is velocity square the so modulated velocity square so kinetic energy of the electron beam increases so what is going to happen this electron gives its kinetic energy to the rf input signal when this energy is transferred into the signal which is at the low intensity low amplitude what is going to happen that its intensity increases that means it get amplified so the signal now which is coming here is the amplified output of the signal which is initially inserted in the buncher cavity and this signal goes out this rf output which is amplified output basically comes out with this node and the electron which are now left with without energy are get collected at this collector end so this are the basic principle which is associated with the two cavity cluster so the velocity modulation plays a very important role because it increases the velocity of the electrons associated with the two cavity cluster and in turn it increases the kinetic energy now the electron is having the more kinetic energy and it transfer its kinetic energy to the rf input signal and the rf input signal get amplified and it get comes out with the this node from the catcher cavity and the electron which is now without the energy is get collected here so this are the working of a two cavity cluster now again just the recap of that cathode what is the cathode the source of electron anode for the formation of electron beam buncher cavity basically it's the inentrant type cavity which is kept at the positive voltage of v not with respect to cathode to affect acceleration we will discuss about how the velocity modulation is done in the next slides rf input voltage of v1 sin omega t is applied to the buncher cavity similar catcher cavity it is similar to the buncher cavity the amplified output signal that is v2 sin omega t is obtained from this cavity and again the collector function is that electrons after transfer of energy to the catcher cavity so that the signal are amplified are collected at the collector this are the working of a two cavity cluster now the process of the velocity modulation so when electron are first accelerated by the high dc voltage v not which we have seen in the figure electron are accelerated by this v not in that case the velocity associated with the electrons are v not is equal to 2 under root 2 e v not upon m and when we substitute the value of e and m and take the under root of that we will have this value as and of course we don't know the value of the v not here so the under root v not and the velocity unit is meter per second now now the microwave signal which has to be amplified is 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 inserted inside the two cavity cluster through the buncher cavity and it's it is when a microwave signal is applied to the input terminal the gap voltage between the buncher cavity appears as this one now this v1 is the amplitude of the signal and v1 is all ob, ob, very very less than v0 because that's one that's why we say that we have to amplify it now since v0 is very very less than v0 the average transient time to the buncher gap distance d is given by tau is equal to d upon v0 so what is d here d is the buncher gap distance you can able to see this in this figure also this one buncher gap distance here it is zero and now it is d so the total distance is d here and it is given by t1 minus t0 t1 is the time at which the electrons leave the buncher cavity and the t uh, t1 is the time at which the electron leaves the buncher cavity and t0 is the time at which the electrons enters the buncher cavity now 
when we have the average gap transit time, what we are going to do? We are multiplying the tau with omega and this is represented as theta g. So, when we multiply tau with omega, it is the whole expression of the tau is, is multiplied with omega, omega t1 minus t0 and omega d upon v0. So, in the last what expression which we have seen in the last slide is overall multiplied with omega and that is represented by theta g. Now, the average microwave voltage in the buncher gap can be found by this average that is why we have uh, taken the tau at the denominator side limit T0 to T1 because we are talking about the buncher cavity and buncher cavity transit time is T0 to T1 frequency uh, signal amplitude V1 sin omega t. Now, we are when we integrate it with the limit T0 and T1, we are able to get this because sin omega t give cos omega t minus of cos omega t that is why minus come here and when we put the limit, we will have this one. Now, what we are going to do here? we are to change this minus sign, we are keeping this as the first term and the, this one as the next term and we are replacing omega t1 with the next one, this term. You can able to see this omega t1 minus omega t0 is equal to omega d upon v0. So, at the place of omega t1, we can write omega t0 plus omega d upon v naught. This is the simple thing which we have done here. Now, we have to solve this equation. So, the next step which we are going to do is just the step which we use for solving the equation. We are representing omega t naught plus omega d by 2 v naught as a. Theta g is here because we have already taken omega d by v naught as theta g. So, that this term can be represented as now, omega d by 2 v naught is equal to theta g by 2 and it is represented as b. So, this expression what we can have to say that this is the omega t naught. So, we can say that this is v naught upon om omega tau and this is cos a minus b because this is a is omega t naught plus theta g by 2 and b is theta g by 2. So, when we take a minus b, we are left with omega t naught only. So, the first expression is omega cos a minus b and this one, this is omega t naught plus theta g by 2 and b is theta g by 2. So, we can have it cos a plus b and when we solve cos a minus b plus cos a plus b, what we are getting? 2 sin a sin b and this term remains the same. So, that the expression which is written here now. v 1 sin omega d by 2 v naught upon omega d upon 2 v naught sin omega t naught plus omega d by v naught. If you are able to solve this equation, then only you are able to get this final expression cos a minus b plus cos a plus b give 2 sin a into sin b. This is the normal general trigonometric equation. Now, what we are having now? Omega d upon 2 v naught is our theta g by 2. So, we are replacing here same here theta g by 2 this one where this is represented as beta i and this is the beam coupling coefficient of the input cavity gap and what we are interpretation which we are getting out of this that it may be seen that increasing the gap transit angle theta g that increasing this angle decreases the coupling coefficient because it is on the denominator side. So, if we increase this of course, we are able to what we are increasing the decrease the coupling between the electron beam and the catcher cavity. The velocity modulation of the beam for given 
microwave signal is decreased. So, we have not to increase the transit gap angle. Now, after the velocity modulation, what we are getting? V t 1 with the velocity after the velocity modulation and it is given by 2 e upon m v naught. This is the initial velocity and now the amplified one is added with this. This one is the amplified one and it is added with this and we are able to get this as the final equation on solving where the factor beta i upon beta i upon v naught into v 1 is called the depth of the velocity modulation. And if we write it more precisely, we can have it, we know that v naught is equal to 2 e v naught upon m. So, at the place of this, we can simply write v naught and this will be of course, the expression will be half since it is a under root. Now, by the binomial expansion, uh, we have that we will do the binomial expression and after that dec uh, dec discarding the higher order function, the final equation which we are getting is this one. This is the final equation after the velocity modulation by doing the binomial expansion and discarding the higher order and only taken the min min uh, minimum order frequency signals. Now, the bunching process. When the electrons leave the buncher cavity, they drift with the velocity given by v t 1 which is our, our modulated velocity. And now, how this uh, forms the bunch of the electron? The effect of velocity modulation leads to bunching process and the current modulation. So, what is going to happen now here? What is going to happen that some velocity are leaving the buncher cavity with the velo same velocity and some with the decreased velocity and some with the faster velocity. But the signal which are with the slower velocity are at the, uh, at the will come first at the same at the time t equal to 0 and it will be later. So, what will going to happen? This will reach the destination at the same time and when they reach the destination at the same time they form the bunch of the electron. So, these are the reason that means some electrons are some electrons had the decreased velocity, some electrons have the increased velocity and some have the same velocity as the initial. So, that is why it is going to happen. For the distance when the from the bunch agree to the location of the dense electron bunching for the electron at T b. T b means at the same velocity. So, for that one del L should be equal to V naught T d minus T v. T d is the time at reaching the final destination. Now, for the other two one which is the slower and the other one is the faster. For the slower one volt distance will be remains the same distance will not change, but the velocity is going to change it is traveling with the minimum velocity and about the time duration T d minus T a. T a is the time at which the slower moving electrons leaves the bunch of cavity and T d is the time at which it reaches the final destination. Similarly, for the faster V max T d minus T c is equal to what is now going to happen? V min T d minus up we have to relate T a with the T b. So, what is the relation between T a and the T b? That is it is T a is equal to T b minus pi by 2 omega because it is at the lesser time and here T c is equal to T b plus pi by 2 omega. So, we are having this equation. So, now minimum velocity and the maximum velocity is given by v naught v ma 1 minus beta i which is our depth of the modulation with the bunching parameter of 1 plus beta i upon b v 1 upon 2 v naught is the 
V max. So, in the next step we are going to substitute this V min in this equation and this V max in second equation. So, on substitution what we are getting all the students please uh, substitute the value then only you are able to get this value and on substituting V max value we are able to get this. So, the necessary condition for this electron T A, T B and T C to meet the same states del L what is going to happen? We are this one is the same. So, the pa deciding parameter is this one and the this one. So, the this one on the subtraction should give the resultant as the d 0 and we are just doing that. So, at the final destination on doing this what we are getting? We are getting T d minus T b is equal to pi v naught upon omega b i beta i v 1 and when we substitute this we are able to get the final del L. Now, since the drift region is free field free, the transit time of an electron to travel a distance L is given by T 2 minus T 1, the drift distance is the T 2 minus T 1. So, if you want to look at the drift distance, you can able to see it. This is the drift space after leaving the buncher cavity till it reaches the catcher cavity, so that it can be go outside is the our drift space. So, so at this time transit time of electron travel distance L is our T 2 minus T 1 and it is basically given by L upon our modulated velocity. And when we substitute the final expression of that we are able to get this expression in the terms of radiance what we are going to do this t is multiplied with omega and the final expression we are getting like this where theta naught is omega l upon v naught which is equal to 2 pi n is the, dis, uh, is the dis, dc transit angle between the cavity and is the number of electron transit cycle in the drift space and x is given by beta i v 1 upon 2 v naught theta naught and this x is our bunching parameter of the electron. Now, we have to actually go through the current. What will the current equation? So, at the buncher gap a charge d q naught passing through a trans time interval d t, d t naught is given by because q is equal to i t. So, i naught d t naught and from the principle of conservation of charges, this same amount of charge d q naught also passes the catcher at the latter time interval d t. So, i naught d t naught should be equal to i 2 d t 2. So, that this uh, principle of conservation of charge can be achieved and after that we are able to get the I 2 at the time T naught and it is given by this equation and I 2 at the time T 2 and it is given by this equation. And finally, the efficiency of the klystron. The efficiency of the klystron is given by P out upon P in on substituting the value of uh, P, P out upon P in we are able to get the efficiency of the two cavity klystron. So, the important formulas which you have to remember is the first one is the this one which you have to always remember our bunching parameter over the equation of the del L our velocity modulated signals these are the important parameters which you have always remember because numerical based on this formulas also come and when we talk about the what type of questions comes in this process basically sometimes it comes to explain the velocity modulation process, explain bunching process and of course the work construction and the working of a two cavity klystron. So, these are the basic thing which comes in this chapter and the, in within this topic. Let us do now one numerical based on this. A two cavity klystron amplifier is given where V naught is equal to 1000 volt, R naught is equal to 40 kilo ohm 
I naught is equal to 25 milli ampere, F is equal to 3 gigahertz. Gap spacing in either cavity is given by this, spacing between the two cavities is equal to this and effective shunt impedance 30 kilo ohm. Find the, in, what you have to find? You have to find the input gap voltage to give maximum voltage V2, voltage gain and the efficiency of the amplifier. So, what we are going to do first? First, we have to find out the input gap voltage for the, to give maximum voltage V0. So, we go through the, for maximum V2, Z1x must be maximum. This means Z1x is equal to 0 0.582 at x is equal to 1.841. You have to remember this value because sometimes it does not comes in the questions also. You have to remember because this is the condition at which we have, we will have able to achieve the maximum. So, so V0 is equal to this. So, using the formula only, we can able to find this. And now, transit gap, again we are just using the formula omega d upon v naught and it is equal to 1 radius. Beam coupling coefficient, again we are just using the formula, we are able to get it 0 0.958 and the DC transit angle between the cavity theta naught is equal to omega t naught equal to omega l upon v naught and we will achieve 40 radian. Now, by getting all this value, we substitute for getting the maximum V1 input voltage. This is the formula which you have to remember 2 V0 into x beta i theta0 and then substituting the value which we have obtained, we are able to get the maximum input voltage as 96.5 and this is the equation for the voltage gain which you have to remember the formula for this and just substituting the value because already all values are either calculated or given in the numerical itself, we are able to get the voltage gain is this one. Now, the last one is the efficiency. The efficiency formula is this one and uh, I think we are not with the I2 and the V2 here. So, we have to find out the I2 and the V2 using the above formula. Just note it down and try to remember it because without remembering this formula, you cannot able to solve this type of question. So, at last, we are getting the efficiency as 46.2 percent, which is uh, which we have already told that efficiency of the two cavity clistron is around 40 percent. So, here comes the end of our two cavity clistron. In the next lecture, we will have the other type of clistron that is the reflex clistron.